Hello uh, and welcome to the second lecture of this fourth module and uh, we have been discussing in this module basically the strength failure theories of uh, uh, lamina and under this uh, uh, we have already discussed that uh, how the strength failure theories in lamina are actually uh, as an extension of the same uh, in isotropic material because all of you have studied the theories of failure in your strength of material course. So, the philosophy of the, the, the that failure theories are same, but uh, the fact that in, in orthotropic lamina the strength and stiffnesses are direction dependent and uh, these are actually taken into account in developing the uh, failure theories in orthotropic lamina. Okay. And uh, we understood that a major difference uh, uh, compared to the, uh, the failure theories in isotropic lamina is that here instead of uh, determining uh, determ uh, instead of uh, finding out the principal stresses and maximum shear stress basically the stresses uh, with reference to the principal material directions are determined why uh, because the strengths and stiffnesses of orthotropic lamina are actually defined with reference to the principal material axis and therefore uh, for any state of stress the stresses uh, with reference to the principal material axis are determined and those are actually compared to the corresponding strengths to assess the safety or failure of a lamina. So, in last class we understood that there are uh, independent criteria, there are interactive criteria. Okay. So, we have discussed in the last class the maximum stress criteria and uh, today we shall discuss the maximum strain criteria and then few of the interactive criteria for the uh, strength failure theories of a lamina. So, uh, we have seen in the last class that in maximum stress theory basically given state of stress we immediately find out what are the st stresses with reference to the material direction that means what is sigma 1, sigma 2 and tau 1, 2 that means along the principal material direction 1 normal stress, principal material direction 2 normal stress and the shear stress in 1 to plane. Okay. Similarly, the in maximum strain theory uh, the failure occurs if any of the strains in the principal material axis exceeds the corresponding allowable strains. That means, if we have a lamina which is suppose this is its principal material direction 1, 2 and this is x, y, this is theta fiber orientation angle. So, given the sta uh, state of stress we find out what are the strains induced in the material directions. Okay. So, for a given state of stress with reference to the global axis, we find out what is the what are the stresses in the material axis and then this is by stress transformation we have discussed in details and then we find out what are the strains in the material directions, two normal strains and one shear strain. How do we do that? We can find out that using the compliance matrix. Okay. So, once we have these strains in the 1 2 plane, those strains are compared to the corresponding allowable strains. Say in direction 1, this is the condition for safety. That means, if, if epsilon 1 is positive, it should be less than the ultimate tensile strain of the lamina in direction 1. If it is negative, then it should be less than uh, ultimate compressive strain of the, uh, uh, in the direction 2. Okay. So, these are the allowable strain in the corresponding allowable strains. Similarly, epsilon 2 if it is positive it should be less than the ultimate 
strain tensile strain in direction 2 which is also called the ultimate transverse strain okay transverse tensile strain and if it is negative it should be less than the transverse compressive strain and for shear of course it is independent of sign in the material axis we had uh, detailed discussions on this in the material axis 1 2 the sign of shear stress is not important however we have seen that uh, in the global axis x y the sign of shear stress is very very important we have discussed in the last class okay so what is this epsilon 1 tu that means what is the transverse tensile strain this is nothing but the transverse uh, sorry what is the longitudinal trans, uh, tensile strain epsilon 1 tu it is nothing but the longitudinal tensile stress ultimate longitudinal tensile stress divided by e1 how we get this how do we determine what is epsilon 1 tu we have discussed in the last class we load the lamina which is loaded in direction 1 in utm and we get the stress strain curve okay up to failure this is nothing but epsilon 1 tu okay this is in the direction 1 and the corresponding strain is nothing but epsilon 1 tu so this is nothing but the sigma 1 tu and the corresponding strain is epsilon 1 tu and this is nothing but e 1 okay similarly we can also have if we load the lamina in the direction 2 and plot the stresses okay till failure so this is nothing but sig transverse tensile strain uh, ten transverse tensile stress sigma 2 tu and the corresponding strain is epsilon t epsilon 2 tu which is ultimate transverse tensile strain and this is nothing but the slope is e2 okay same is uh, uh, in the same way you can also have for compression and for shear also okay we can have for shear also this is the ultimate shear strain tau 1 to u and the corresponding shear strain is gamma 1 to u and this is nothing but g 1 to okay so so we get this allowable strains in direction 1 2 and the shear strain in the plane 1 2 from this and then this is the these are the conditions of for safety again like uh, the maximum stress theory here also actually there are uh, five criteria okay this is one when the uh, epsilon 1 is tensile this is the second criterion when epsilon 1 is compressive third criteria epsilon 2 is tensile fourth criteria epsilon 2 is compressive and the fifth criteria is the shear okay so it's actually though it's called maximum shear strain theory analogous to maximum shear uh, sorry though it is called maximum strain theory so it is actually there are sub uh, five sub criteria okay similar to uh, maximum stress theory so now suppose we want to find out using maximum strain theory what is the off axis tensile strength we all already know what is off axis tensile strength suppose you have an angle lamina it is subjected to a tensile stress sigma x all other stresses are zero it is subjected to only sigma x so we would like to know what is sigma x at failure so this is the off axis tensile strength okay we have already determined the off axis tensile strength using maximum stress theory so we would like to do the same exercise using maximum strain theory so the first thing is that given the state of stress is therefore the state of stress is only sigma x is non zero other two stresses are zero therefore this is the state of stress 
with reference to x, y or the global axis. So, first we find out the stresses with reference to 1, 2 and from the trans transformation we get that sigma x cos square theta, sigma x sin square theta minus sigma x sin theta cos theta these are the three stresses uh, in the 1, 2 plane. Okay? Normal stress along 1, normal stress along 2 and in plane shear stress in the 1, 2 plane. Now, having known the stresses in the material axis, we can determine the strains in the material axis. So, these are the strains in the material axis, how? Using the compliance matrix, okay? because we know this, using the compliance matrix we can actually find out what are the corresponding strains in the material axis and we know the terms of the compliance matrix are this. Okay? Therefore, we get the strains along material axis in terms of sigma x as this. Okay? So, we get the strains along material axis using the I mean uh, stress transformation and the co compliance matrix. Okay? So, once we have these strains in the material axis, now we can apply the maximum strain theory. So, we can apply the maximum strain theory So, this is the maximum strain theory. So, we put the corresponding values in terms of sigma x okay. this is nothing but epsilon 1, epsilon 2, gamma 1, 2 and we also write the allowable strains in terms of the strengths. Okay. So, we get these are the three conditions okay basically three three uh, not three actually there are five conditions now in this case since we are considering this to be tensile therefore sigma x is positive okay therefore since so we will have this is one condition we don't have to check this and this is the second condition this is the third condition okay so if we check this third conditions and then like the earlier case, we can actually uh, determine if we plot this now. Sorry, if we plot this, variation of the sigma x with theta okay. Suppose this is 0, 45 degree and this is 90 degree. So, we will get a similar kind of you know curves. we get one for this tensor uh, I mean this first inequality then we get for the second this is the for the shear and then so we get almost the values will be little different why it is different because of this portions effect okay because of this portions ratio okay other th other than that the trends are e exactly same but there is a little difference in the values okay so this is what is maximum strain theory. Now, in both these cases maximum stress theory and maximum strain theory, each strength the directional strengths are considered independently therefore, they are non-interactive or independent theories. Okay? You can clearly see there are in this particular case there are three conditions 1, 2, 3 depending upon the sign of sigma x if it is negative the conditions will be, but these three are independent conditions. Okay? There is no interactions between the different strength parameters. So, now next we will uh, discuss the interactive theories.
first is Sci Hill failure theory. Actually, Hill uh, proposed or, or uh, Hill as actually Hill actually proposed kind of distortion energy theory or the von Mises criterion for anisotropic material. And Psi has actually adopted that for a orthotropic lamina, therefore, it is Psi Hill theory. This states that the condition for safety for an orthotropic material is given by this. Okay. Now, this is as uh, this is a uh, kind of extension of the von Mises criteria, von Mises criterion, and we know that von Mises criterion actually represents the distortion energy in an isotropic material. If you remember for any given state of stress, we actually split the state of stress and the corresponding strains into hydrostatic and deviatoric part. Hydrostatic is actually responsible for the uh, volume change and the deviatoric part is actually responsible for dis uh, distortion and the energy corresponding to distortion is the distortion energy. And using the distortion energy there is von Mises equivalent stress are actually obtained. Therefore, this actually represents the distortion energy, but you will appreciate that unlike isotropic material in orthotropic materials distortion cannot be separated from dilatation like in, in an isotropic material we can actually separate the two stresses and the corresponding strains, but in orthotropic it may not be possible because of the coupling there is a shear extension coupling possible. Okay. Therefore, uh, it is not possible to separate the distortion energy from the dilatation energy and therefore, in true sense it is not a it is not uh, related to distortion energy even though it is adopted in the same line, but this is not a distortion energy theory. Okay. Unlike the other uh, 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 interactive criteria like maximum stress and maximum strain criteria where we have uh, say uh, around 5 different sub criteria, but here a single function predicts the strength. You can see there is a single if this equal to 1 then it fails, if it is less than 1 it is safe. And also more importantly it incorporates interaction between the strengths okay, which was not there in maximum stress and maximum strength uh, strain uh, criteria. However, the prediction here is slightly lower the strength predicted is slightly lower compared to that by maximum stress and strain criteria. Okay. So, let us see that how this uh, parameters g 1, g 2, g 3, g 4, g 5, g 6 in this are calculated. Okay. These are kind of uh, parameters related to the strengths. Okay. So, how they are represent, how they are actually determined. So, what we do is in this suppose we take a lamina we take a lamina okay, and apply sigma 1 along 1. So, we know at failure at failure sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 T u. Therefore, this is a condition for failure. Okay. Similarly, suppose we take the same lamina, now we apply this is direction 1, this is direction 2. Suppose sigma 1, but compressive therefore, at failure sig sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 C u. So, this way with respect to the material axis we can have different failure conditions. Okay. So, we put this like this is in the case 1 that sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 T u is a condition for failure. That means, this represents if we put these values only sigma 1 is applied other stresses are 0 then the right hand side will be equal to 1. Okay. So, the right hand side of this will be equal to 1 at failure.
this is equal to 1. Okay. So, if we put only sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 t u other states are 0, wherever sigma 1 is there, then this will be equal to 1. So, this is precisely what has been done and we get an equation like this. Similarly, we put another condition sigma 2 tensile and we know the fa failure condition is sigma 2 is equal to sigma 2 t u. Therefore, this is another failure condition. So, we get this. Okay. Okay. So, we put sigma 3 is equal to sigma 2 T u because we assume that we assume that uh, it is a it is a transversely isotropic therefore, the in the 2 3 plane suppose this is the lamina. this is 1 sorry yeah so this is 1 this is 2 uh, and say this is 3 so 2 3 is the plane of isotropy therefore in 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 2 3 plane it is it behaves isotropically therefore sigma 3 is equal to sigma 2 t u okay so we get another equation then we put this shear failure condition tau 1 to is equal to tau 1 to ultimate and we get another equation. So, combining this all this we get the values of g 1, g 2 and g 6. Okay. g 1, g 2, g 3 and g 6 uh, in terms of the strengths of the lamina with reference to the material axis. So, when we put this in the equation for uh, for a lamina considering plane stress that means out of stresses out of plane stresses are zero and of course considering 2 3 as the uh, uh, plane of transverse isotropy we get this is the condition for safety in a lamina okay so this is the psi hill i mean theory for uh, for orthotropic lamina where it says that if this term is less than 1 then it is safe if it is equal to 1 that represents the condition of failure. Okay. However, this actually you can see this underestimates the strength as it does not consider the sign of the stresses like what happens is whether sigma 1 is positive or negative because it is squared it will be same and the corresponding strength is always tensile. Okay. Therefore, it does not same is true with sigma 2 okay. because it is squared it does not take care of the sign of the stresses and therefore, it underestimates the strength. So, it is modified to take care of the signs. So, it is slightly modified like this instead of sigma 1 T u it is written as x 1 and instead of sigma uh, here even though it was sigma 1 T u square it is written as x 1 and x 2 and instead of sigma 2 t u it is written as y and of course, shear is independent of sign in the material axis therefore, it remains s is same. So, what is x 1? If sigma 1 is positive it is the ultimate tensile strength ultimate longitudinal tensile strength if it is negative if it is the longitudinal compression strength. Similarly, x 2 will be longitudinal tensile strength if sigma 2 is positive it will be longitudinal compression strength if sigma 2 is negative. Similarly, y is the transverse tensile strength if sigma 2 is positive y is transverse compressive strength if sigma 2 is negative and s is always uh, because uh, shear strength is independent of sign in the material axis. So, this is how the psi hill theory is slightly modified to take care of the sign of the stresses. So, now suppose we want to do the same exercise what we have done for maximum stress and maximum strain theory that means, we would like to uh, determine the off axis tensile strength of a lamina. Suppose, this is the lamina and this is subjected to tensile strength 
sigma x. So, you would like to know what is the sigma x at failure. This is the off axis tensile strength, all other stresses are 0, sigma y tau x y is equal to 0. Okay? So, this is the state of stress. state of stress with reference to x y. So, what we do is immediately we find out what is the state of stress with respect to the material axis by, by this stress transformation matrix T okay? and the state of stress with respect to x y is sigma x equal to not, not sigma is only non zero others are zero okay therefore we get what is sigma 1 sigma 2 and tau 1 2 in terms of sigma x and of course cos theta sin theta this c stands for cos theta s stands for sin theta that we know already so once we put this uh, in the Psi Hill theory. Now, you see this is positive, okay. this is also positive. Therefore, in both uh, when we apply this accordingly, this will be sigma 1 T u, this will also be sigma 1 T u, this will also be sigma 1 T u, and this is the sigma 2 T u, and this is of course tau 1 to u. So, once we put this, this sigma 1 sigma 2 values in this. Uh, equation, we get an expression like this. This is what we get. Okay. So, we can now clearly see, now this is the condition for failure. Okay. Now, what will be the value of sigma x at failure is of course, decided by the cos theta sin theta. That means, it is a function of theta. So, if we plot this, now we have plotted this for a typical glass epoxy properties where uh, longitudinal tail sign strength is 500 meg mega Pascal, longitudinal compression is 350 mega Pascal, transverse tensile strength is 5 mega Pascal, transverse compression is 75 mega Pascal and the in plane shear strength is 35 mega Pascal this is for a typical glass epoxy. So, using these properties we have plotted this just uh, uh, writing a simple MATLAB code we could plot that and this is how the variation is you can see as we have uh, discussed that this is a single fun function which predicts the strength and therefore, it is a continuous curve unlike uh, if you remember that in the case of both in the case of maximum stress and maximum strain it was actually there were cusps. this represents the longitudinal tensile, this is shear and this is transverse tensile if you remember. Okay. So, unlike this here we get a continuous okay, because it is a single uh, uh, equation you know it is a single equation which predicts the strength. So, you can try for other materials also and you can clearly see at theta is equal to 0. what is sigma x at failure? It is nothing but sigma 1 T u. It is understood and you can see here it is 500 which is sigma 1 T u and at theta is equal to 90 sigma x is sigma 1 sorry sigma 2 T u. This is the is 5 mp and this is understood I mean theta is equal to 0 means this is the case. Therefore, sigma x at failure will be definitely sigma 1 T u and theta is equal to 90 means this is the case. Therefore, 
the failure condition is definitely sigma 2 T u. So, we have also plotted the same for a typical graphite epoxy properties, same kind of continuous curve we, we got uh, unlike again the maximum stress or strain theory, but only thing is that in maximum st uh, stress theory uh, we could also uh, when we actually uh, determine the off axis strength we could also tell the probable mode of failure okay? like uh, if the failure is here it is because of transverse tensile if the failure was here it is because of the shear, but here it is not possible because it is interactive here it is actually uh, we can only say that this is the uh, off axis tensile strength the mode of failure cannot be determined. We can of, of course, uh, have a deeper look into all the terms and make out, but it is not tangible looking at the expression straight away. So, the example we have solved using maximum stress theory, we have taken the same example again just to have a comparison of the strength prediction by maximum stress theory and by psi hill theory. So, here uh, this is subjected to combined stresses sigma x sigma y as well as in plane shear tau x y and it is given that sigma x equal to 4 p sigma y is equal to minus 6 p tau x y is equal to 8 p. We have to find out positive value of p okay? so that the lamina is safe the maximum value of p so that the lamina is safe. Now, for graphite epoxy typical properties are given I have taken uh, from book a typical properties, but I mean it may be different as you know the properties vary from uh, 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 with volume fraction. Okay? So, this is a typical uh, strength properties for graphite epoxy. So, let us uh, we have already discussed these steps we will not uh, put time uh, spend much time here, but only thing we will see what we get. So, what we do first is we find out the given for the given state of stress sigma x sigma y tau x y with respect to x y we find out what are the material axis stress that means with respect to 1 2 how by using the transformation matrix because it is a 60 degree. So, we put theta is equal to 60 degree and we find out because sigma x is 4 p sigma y is minus 6 p sig tau x y is 8 p. So, we can find out what are the material axis stresses. So, sigma 1 is equal to 3.4 p sigma 2 is equal to minus 5.4 p and tau 1 2 is equal to minus 8.3 p. Okay? So, now we apply uh, this for uh, this in the psi hill theory. Okay? like had it been uh, maximum strain theory we would have applied like this okay but now we'll be applying this in the psi hill theory okay so in psi hill theory first let us see that sigma 1 is positive okay sigma 2 is negative tau 1 2 is anyway it doesn't matter whether it is positive or negative since sigma 1 is positive therefore x1 is sigma 1 tu therefore, x 1 is equal to 1725 mega Pascal. Okay? So, we have put this here x 1. Sigma 2 is negative, okay? therefore, x 2 is sigma 1 C u and therefore, x 2 is 1350. I mean this is important I mean you okay? because sigma 2 is positive otherwise x 2 would have been this then uh, because sigma 2 is negative. Okay? Now, again sigma 2 is negative therefore, y is sigma 2 C u therefore, this is 275 this is sigma 2 C u. So, we put this and then tau y uh, tau 1 2 
this is minus 8.3 and this is 95. So, if we put this we get that p should be less than 11.16 into 10 to the power 6. If you remember I think uh, for the same problem please go back and check that uh, using maximum stress theory I think we get something like 11.4. So, this predicts slightly less than uh, uh, that what is predicted by maximum stress theory. Okay. Now, one of the uh, drawback just now we discussed that in the psi hill theory in its general form actually it does not take care of the sign of the stresses. So, to account for different strengths in tension and compression. So, Hoffman actually uh, added few linear terms in the psi hill equation hills equation like this. See this is one linear term c 1 into uh, c 4 into sigma 1 c 5 into sigma 2 and c 6 into sigma 3 other terms are uh, same like uh, hills theory. Okay. Now, suppose uh, for plane stress in in plane 1 2 sigma 3 is equal to 0 tau 2 3 and tau 1 3 are 0 and considering transverse isotropy in 2 3 I mean every time I am uh, writing this because you should be clear about what exactly is transverse isotropy. Suppose this is the fiber direction, so 1, this is the transverse direction, so 2, and this is 3. Okay. So, 2, 3 is the plane of transverse isotropy, and in that plane, the directions are independent, I mean, direction, uh, I mean, the properties are independent of direction in that plane. Therefore, sigma 3 T u is equal to sigma 2 T u, sigma 3 C u is equal to sigma 2 C u and uh, uh, S 3 1 is equal to S 1 2. Okay. Now, this C 1 C 2 like these 9 constants they, they actually represent uh, uh, the, the strength properties how to determine those. Okay. So, this could be determined from 9 strength with respect to principal material axis. Okay. I mean uh, what are the what are the uh, conditions like if sigma 1 is applied then the only sigma 1 is applied then sigma 1 T u is the failure condition only sigma 2 is applied sigma 2 T u okay, if it is positive. Another condition is sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 C u if it is negative sigma 2 is equal to sigma 2 C u if it is negative. Okay. Similarly, sigma 3 is equal to sigma 3 T u, sigma 3 is equal to sigma 3 C u. Then the 3 uh, shear strain tau 1 2 is equal to tau 1 2 u, tau 2 3 is equal to tau 2 3 u tau 1 3 is equal to tau 1 3 u. So, putting all this and making this is equal to 1, we can actually find out the values of C. Okay. So, here it is important to know that the, there are interactions between the, it, it actually takes care of the sign. See, because there is a linear term, so if it is sigma 1 is positive, this will be plus, if sigma 1 is negative, this will be minus. Therefore, there will be differences. It, it actually recognizes the sign of the stress unlike in psi hill theory where because sigma 1 square. So, it does not matter whether sigma 1 is positive or negative. So, for a uh, two dimensional uh, plane problems uh, for a uh, lamina orthotropic lamina considering this uh, it is a plane uh, stress problem in with 1 2 as the uh, plane stress therefore, out of stresses sigma 3 tau 2 3 and tau 1 3 uh, are 0 and considering 2 3 as the plane of transverse isotropy just now we have discussed this also. So, we have these relations okay. and then it using this this uh, and putting these uh, conditions uh, we get the Hoffman's failure theory as this. This is the condition for safety. Okay. 
now uh, this C 1, C 2 all these are actually in terms of these 5 strength parameters of the lamina and we get this as the condition for safety in case of the Hoffman's failure theory. Here you can clearly see that uh, it actually takes care of the sign. Okay. Now, if you suppose uh, sigma 1 T u is equal to sigma 1 C u that means, the strengths are equal in tension and compression then again it, uh, it is like it is like the say, same as psi hill theory it comes back to the same psi hill theory because this terms becomes 0. Okay. This terms becomes 0. Now, all these uh, criteria which are discussed uh, are now every time a, a criteria is criterion is put forward they are actually uh, correlated with the experimental observations and it was observed that uh, all these are actually inadequate in representing the experimental data. Therefore, to improve uh, to obtain with an objective of getting better correlation with the experimental data uh, psi u failure theory actually uh, that increase the number of terms in the equation. What happens if you increase the number of terms? It perhaps give better fit with the experimental data okay. and there will be more interaction among the strength parameters. Okay. So, psi u actually postulated the condition for safety as this where i j going from 1 to 6 that means, there are 6 strings you know sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, tau 1, 2, tau 2, 3, tau uh, 1, 3. So, all the possible interactions are taken here. So, if we expand this, this itself will have 36 terms and there it will be 3 terms because it is in, in index notation this is actually f 1 sigma 1 like f 1 sigma 1 plus f 2 sigma 2 plus f 3 sigma 3 this term. Okay. And this term will have again each term in this will have 6 therefore, 6 into 6 36. Okay. So, however, we can uh, this is simplified for a 2 dimensional lamina with plane stresses 1 2 and transverse isotropy in 2 3 just we have discussed it number of times. So, then this get this uh, this actually reduces to this is the condition psi u failure criterion. Okay. So, till we have 7 constant which you need to determine in terms of the uh, strength parameters. Okay. So, let us uh, see the conditions suppose again we put the failure conditions say we put first condition is sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 T u that means, longitudinal tensile failure. So, we get an expression when we put this condition in uh, in this and make this equal to 1 okay, is equal to 1 at failure. So, we put this failure condition and make the expression equal to 1 we get this uh, this. Okay. Similarly, we consider longitudinal compression failure and we get this equation. Okay. Transverse tensile failure we get this equation. Transverse compression we get this. In plane shear it is independent of sign therefore, bo both will give the same thing. So, and that leads to that f 6 equal to 0 because uh, in the material axis the sign of shear stress we have already discussed that uh, we are convinced that the sign of shear stress is, is immaterial in material axis therefore, f 6 is 0. So, from this we get f 1 1 f 1 f 1 1 f 2 f 2 2 f 6 6 in terms of the strengths of the lamina in the material axis. Now, still we did not get uh, f 1 2. Okay. So, if we put f 1 f 1 1 f 2 f 2 2 we get this expression. 
this is the condition for failure. Okay. So, this is kind of again you can if you look back it is kind of same uh, similar to psi hill theory only difference is this. This term where there is sigma 1 sigma 2 and uh, to determine f 1 2 we need to apply biaxial stress and need to observe where it fails. That means, we take a uh, lamina and apply sigma 1 and sigma 2 and find out what is the combination of sigma 1 and sigma 2 at failure. And from that we can get f 1 2, but there may be large number of combinations. Okay. See one condition is only sigma 1 no sigma 2, another condition is only sigma 2 no sigma 1. Okay. So, in between there could be infinite combinations between sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, what is done is that biaxial test is conducted with equal stress sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma and all other stresses are 0 and when we put this we get this as the condition okay? and we already have the values of f 1 and f 2. Therefore, from this we get what is the value of f 1 2. Okay? So, knowing f 1 2 from this now for that we have to conduct a uh, biaxial test. How we do this? We apply in a lamina equal and then check what is the value of this sigma at failure. Okay. And knowing that sigma only we can find out what is f 1 2 okay. because the sigma is required other strength parameters are already known, okay. but the sigma is required. Okay. So, once we know this f 1 2 then we can write the complete the psi hill theory I mean psi hill failure criterion and then it is seen that uh, especially for glass epoxy it correlates better compared to other interactive theories. Okay. So, uh, these are the uh, few uh, interactive theories which we have uh, discussed today and in, in summary like uh, we have discussed the failure theories for uh, orthotropic lamina first we understood how they are different compared to the isotropic uh, uh, isotropic bodies or isotropic materials the main difference is that here uh, the stresses in the material direction is more important the reason is the strengths of orthotropic lamina are actually uh, defined with reference to material axis okay therefore uh, unlike isotropic material we don't uh, determine the principal stresses but we find out the uh, material axis stresses and then those material axis stresses are compared to the corresponding strengths. In case of uh, independent non interactive theories each strength is compared independently and then the failure or safety is assessed. In case of interactive theories it is a the, the stresses the combined effect of the strengths are actually taken into account the interaction between the strengths are actually taken into account and in a single equation we get whether the failure uh, uh, will occur or not. Okay. So, in all these uh, uh, theories actually uh, they are correlated with experiments and it is observed that among these uh, especially with glass epoxy uh, the psi u failure theory actually provides a better prediction compared to other failure theories okay. because it actually uh, uh, have it actually takes care of the uh, 
uh, the interaction much the interaction of among the strings are much better compared to other failure theories. So, I will stop here today. Uh, the next class will uh, next uh, lecture will discuss the hydrothermal stresses in lamina and that will be the last lecture in this module. Uh, with this uh, last lecture we will end the macro mechanics of lamina. Thank you.